please state your full name. Carrie Lee Blake. And spell your first and last names. K-E-R-I-L-E-E-B-L-A-K-E. -E -E -E. Thank you. You may inquire. Thank you. Ms. Blake, what is your relationship to Bruce Timothy Blake? He's my husband. And how long have you been married? Uh, since 2006. Okay. Back in 2012, August, September time frame, where were you all living? 1940 Smith Drive in Titusville. And was there anyone else residing in that household with you? Yes, our two daughters. Okay. And who were your immediate neighbors? Uh, Gary Hembry, Kim Cast, I believe her two daughters, Roger Pichor, Jessica Nobles, and her son, I believe. Okay. And also across the street from you, who were your neighbors? Across the street from us was a vacant house oh. from us and, and Gary. Okay, sort of, I guess, catty corner. Across Lane, that would be William Woodward. Okay. And uh, Mr. Woodward's address was 10, 1960 Smith Drive, is that correct? Or you... Yes. Okay. Now, I want to ask you about the clip that we just um, played for the jury. Um, you were one of the participants in that clip, isn't that correct? I'm sorry, I was one of the... the participants in that clip. Yes, I was. <clears throat> and during that clip, uh, there were some comments directed toward the Woodwards regarding their daughter, Ava. Is that correct? Yes, there was. Okay. You were one of the persons that made that comment. No, I was not. Isn't it the fact that you, after... Kim Cass made a threat to have Ava anally raped. Mm -hmm. Did you repeat it that? No, I did not. Okay. Isn't it also a fact that you added to that by threatening to burn the Woodward's house around them while they slept? No, I did not make that comment. Are you claiming someone else made that comment? Yes, I am. And who are you saying made that comment? Kim Cast. Okay. Anyone else? Not that I can remember. I did make a comment, but it was not either one of those two. What was your comment then? Uh, after Mr. Woodward attempted to tell me he was going to cut me open like a pig, I said, and we were going to pay them to do it. That pay was them, my comment. Pay them to do what? What Kimberly Cast. Well, what did Kimberly Cast had said? Raping having Ava raped. Okay. And in response to that, Mr. Woodward made some sort of comment to the effect that if that happened or his daughter was harmed, he would eviscerate you. Yes. <clears throat> and you responded to that, that you would pay to have his daughter anally raped. I did. Okay. As a matter of fact, you are the person who threatened to have Mr. Woodward's daughter uh, Ava sodomized using your language by niggers, correct? No. Do you recall uh, your testimony in an earlier proceeding in this cause? Yes. Do you recall being asked the question, okay, all right, and you are the person who threatened to have Mr. Woodward's daughter, Ava, sodomized by your word, niggers, yes? And your answer is, at one point, yes. You recall being asked that question and giving that testimony? I do, yes. Okay. You were under oath in that proceeding? Is that correct? Yes, I was. Were you telling the truth? I believed at the time I was, yes. So at this time you're not? No, I honestly do not remember making that statement. Okay. Well, let me ask you if you recall making this statement. Do you recall um, talking in front of a gentleman at Knox Craig? No, I didn't. Okay. Did you recall uh, 
frequenting the pool area there with your husband, Tim Blake, and interacting with some of the residents there yes. around August, September time frame 2012. Yes. Do you recall having a conversation at that point in time uh, with Mr. Huntington and others uh, regarding uh, your preferred form of entertainment for the evening? No, it was not said like that, and Mr. Huntington was not a part of that conversation. Isn't it a fact that you said, in Mr. Huntington's presence, that <clears throat> what you and your husband were planning to do on more than one occasion is fuck with the neighbor? No. And that you had indicated, this is what we do. This is our entertainment for the evening. We go home and we fuck with the neighbor. We drink beer and we fuck with the neighbor. No. I do not drink, so. Did you also uh, make statements in front of Mr. Huntington to fuck that guy up? Not that I remember, no. Okay. And that guy would be referring to Mr. Woodward, wouldn't it? I suppose. And were you present when Mr. Blake, your husband, was talking about how he hated that motherfucker referring to Mr. Woodward and he was going to ruin his life. No, I was not present for that. And as a matter of fact, one of the last times that you made these statements in front of Mr. Huntington was just days before the events of September 2nd. No. Is that correct? No, it's not. Now, isn't it a fact that you, in consort with your husband, Mr. Picior, Mr. Hembury, his significant other, Mr. Picior's significant other, made it your mission in life to harass the Woodward family on an almost nightly basis? No. No, we harassed him just as much as he harassed us. I see. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> you did not. Um, almost nightly from August 29th through September 3rd uh, initiate yelling threats, um, insults, etc., all directed at the Woodward family. Not nightly, no. There was about maybe two incidents, two nights. I see. And which two nights do you recall throwing insults and threats at the Woodward family? I do not remember dates. There was so many times that it happened, I can't tell you dates. Okay. Now, do you recall that it happened on September 2nd? That what had happened? Throwing insults, directing insults toward the Woodward family, threatening the Woodward family, threatening Mr. Woodward. Not toward their family, no. We had people in and out all night long. So it's your testimony that none of the threats that were directed that evening were directed at the Woodward's or the Woodward family? No, I didn't say that. Okay. What are you saying then? I guess, threats well, direct I guess some of the comments were directed at Mr. Woodward in his house. We did not have any idea that he was home, and I wasn't outside all night. I was in and out with my kids, taking care of stuff inside as well as kind of checking up on everybody outside. So you were not even aware that Mr. Woodward and his family were at home? No, not at all. So you were just directing these comments to an empty house? Well, I suppose. Well, that makes a lot of sense. It would certainly serve a very valid purpose, would it not, to direct threats at an empty house? I suppose. To ask someone who was not in the house to come out and fight, that would make sense, wouldn't it? I don't remember making that statement. Your group made that statement on more than one occasion, didn't they? I'm on sorry, who? Your group. My group? I didn't know I had a group. You didn't? Isn't it a fact that you acted in consort with Mr. Piccolo, your husband, <coughs> the Hembury, Mr. Hembury, Ms. Noble, um, Ms. Cass, and on that particular evening, your children, some of their children, 
and other people that attended your party, all to participate in this harassment and threatening of the Woodward family. No, we were just having a barbecue that night. Okay. I can't help what other people do. I, I, I can't make them be quiet. And you, of course, weren't participating in goading any of that on at all, right? I didn't say not at all. I'm sorry? I did not say not at all. Okay, so what was your role? Going out and making sure that they were supposedly behaving. Well, what is, constitutes behaving in your mm, mind? Not yelling obscenities at the neighbor. So you were stopping them and saying, don't shout obscenities at the neighbor when you heard that. Right? I had attempted once or twice that night, yes, sir. I see. And you were highly successful. No. 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 We about, would not be here today if I was successful. How about mooning? No, I was not a part of that. Okay. I came out after that happened and asked what was going on, and they told me they were mooning, and I said, don't do that. It's going to be misconstrued, and walked back in my house. So that you're talking to them about don't do that, that would be misconstrued, that would be clearly audible on the tape as well, as what they were saying at the time they were mooning, correct? I suppose. And you would be right there, so you would be I was not right visible. there. Well, you had to be there to tell them, don't do this, it's going to be misconstrued. I walked outside and said, what's going on? And I can't remember who had said it, but someone had told me what was going on, and I said, don't do that, it's going to be misconstrued. I guess the guys were mooning themselves. I really don't know. I was not outside. Okay. I cannot tell you exactly what was happening at that point. Do you recall whether your husband was directing any threats toward the Woodwards that evening? I'm sure he was. Do you recall what he, the nature of his threats were? Uh, it was numerous things throughout the night. Such as? Come on out here, Billy, let's fight. Uh, I really can't tell you everything. Okay. And he was directing that, come on, Billy, let's fight to an empty house. As far as we knew, yes. The gentlemen were very drunk that night, and I don't even think they knew if he was home or not. I see. What are some of the other comments you heard your husband direct toward the Woodward home? I'm sorry? What were some of the other comments you recall hearing your husband direct toward the Woodward home? He taunted him a few times. I think he called him an asshole. Uh, I know earlier in the evening... He tried to get him out in the street to fight him like a man to resolve the issues that we were having. Mm -hmm. And um, he threatened in that particular segment that he would fight him to the death, correct? I don't know if that's what was said or not. It was five and a half years ago. I can't remember everything that was said by whom. Okay. All right. Anything else you can recall? No. Did you hear Roger Picor uh, address any threats or insults toward the Woodward home? Everybody did. How many is included in everybody? Six people. Well, there were a lot more than six people there. Yes, correct? there was. Okay. Well, let's talk about the six people who were the everybody that was directing threats. That would include you, correct? Correct. That would include your husband, correct? Mm -hmm. Would that include Kim... Cass? Yep. Would that include <coughs> Roger Pacor? Yes. Would that include Gary Hembury? Yes. Would that include Jessica Nobles? Yes. Would that include Justin Pacor? Justin? Justin. He didn't get there till later. I don't really remember seeing Justin too much. Okay. Um, how about Devin? Not that I recall. Okay. But Devin didn't really stay outside till Justin showed up. Okay. Um, how about any of the other young men or women that were there? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so only the adults were engaging this activity toward the Woodwards. Is that correct? That I knew of, yes. Okay. It wasn't just young boys blowing off steam, talking the way young boys blow. They very well could have been. There were a lot of neighborhood kids over earlier in the day, and they were wrestling in the front yard.
believe I had asked you about burning the Woodward's house down with them asleep in it. And you indicated that you heard Miss Cass made that threat. Yes, she did. Okay. Did you join in that threat as well? Not that I remember. Well, would you look at page 460? Now, questions, and I'm asking you to do this to refresh your recollection. That's when you had testified about Ms. Cass' threats, is that correct? Does that refresh your recollection about whether or not you joined in that? I'm sorry, repeat your question. Does reading that refresh your recollection? Yes, it does. Whether or not you joined in that particular threat? I suppose I did. Okay. I would have remembered better here than I would have now. All right. Now, that particular evening, Entertainment uh, was to. Can we can we clarify what when this happened in, in relation to September second and September third? Well, that particular threat was on August fifth, isn't that correct? No, it's not. It was on August eleventh. August eleventh. Mm -hmm. August eleventh. Mm -hmm. I stand corrected. Uh, now I want to show you uh, what's been marked as defendant. That's a screenshot of the portion of the video on the 20th. Do you recognize that scene? On the what? 20th? Did I say the 20th? I'm sorry. On September 2nd, 2012. I do. It says surveillance in front of Billy's house with his truck pointed towards our houses. Okay. And this activity? I'm sorry? What's that is? Where, where did you point? You need to stand up? Please. You may. I didn't see where you pointed. I do not know what that is. <clears throat> you recall hearing Kim Cast shouting out that evening, burn it. No, I wasn't outside. Okay. Let me refer you to page 459 of your testimony. Line 10. What line? Line 10. Line 10. I did, I guess I did hear someone say burn it then. So that refreshes your recollection? Yes, it does. And who did you hear yell burn it? It was more than likely Kim Cast. Okay. Kim Cast is Gary Hembree's girlfriend, is that correct? Yes, she is. Okay. Was. Was. And during that time, there were uh, some other insults uh, being, or, Statements being yelled, white power, KKK, things of that nature. Recall those? But not now, I don't. Okay. So you wouldn't be able to give us any guidance as to who's doing that? No. Do you recall hearing uh, the use of the pejorative faggot? Yes. Evening. And do you recall who you rec uh, heard saying that? Uh, it was said multiple times, and both Gary and Roger that I remember said it. I'm not sure if my husband did or not. Okay. And that was, again, directed at the empty Woodward house, correct? Yes. In addition to your husband talking about trying to get Mr. Woodward to come out and fight him in the street, isn't it also true that Mr. Pecor was participating in that? Yes. Isn't it a fact that your husband during that, as part of this conversation, was bragging about how he had uh, done it, talking about fighting, plenty of times. See how white my knuckles are. I don't remember that. Okay. Do you recall hearing your husband sing a little ditty to the about Ava Gardner talking about 25 down? No, I don't. Do you recall hearing that at the hearing and identifying your husband's voice as being the person who did that? If, if that's what the papers say, then yeah. 
Okay. Well, let me see if I can refresh your recollection. Page 465, starting at line 16. Yes, I did. Do you recall hearing a conversation about when we get him out and get him fighting, when he goes and then he's going to go to jail or when he's going to go to jail? It's referring to an attempt to get Mr. Woodward out and then you can get him put into jail? No. Do you recall identifying Kim Cast as being the person who said that at the hearing? If that's what I said then, then yeah. Okay. You look at page 466, line 21. Does that refresh your recollection as to whether or not you did that? After I listened to the video, yes. It sounded like him. Okay. Now, do you recall hearing the phrase... How do you like me, bitch? Army faggot, reject bitch. Those types of comments that evening. I remember hearing them, but I do not remember who said them. Okay. Were they directed at the Woodward family? Probably. Okay. Again, this empty house, because you all didn't know. All of this activity was being directed toward an empty house, right? As far as we knew. I see. Now... Your particular home also had a surveillance system, correct? If that's what you want to call it. Surveillance camera. It had a camera. It, it was, wasn't hooked up to anything. Wasn't turned on that evening. No, it didn't record at night and it didn't have it didn't have the night vision on it or audio or any of that. You all didn't turn that quote unquote surveillance camera off because you knew what was going to be happening that evening, did you? No. My camera did not record. I had no recording device. Now, that evening, do you recall hearing someone talking about, uh, he's got a gun? No, I don't. Okay. Do you recall listening to that clip and identifying, basically recognizing it to the extent that it was one of the females present, but you couldn't tell which one of the females? I do not remember that at this time. Okay. Would you like to look at page 472? 472? Yeah. If that's what I said, yes, sir. If you recall hearing a discussion among your group talking about hold my weed, hold my weed. No, I do not. Well, let me see again if I can refresh your recollection. Page 478. That's what I said. Do you recall identifying that person as Roger McCore? I said it sounds like Roger. Recall again in conjunction with this portion of the clip that this still shot is made, talking about the comments, white power. You heard that clearly on the tape that day, correct? I suppose. I, honestly, I don't remember today. Well, again, try and refresh your recollection, page 479. I said I wasn't 100% positive. And you didn't know it was your husband. I said, I don't know. Uh, I think I asked you, can we assume it wasn't Billy Woodward? And you said you didn't know. I said, it sounds like Roger. Okay. And that would be Roger Pacor? Yes. Now, let me ask you, back in this point in time, you had known... Uh, Mr. William Woodward for some period of time, is that correct? About oh, seven months. Okay. Uh, at various times, uh, he and his family had assisted your family, isn't that correct? Without being asked, yes. Okay. Loaned money for food, help pay rent? No, we had come home one day, and he walked up with a receipt for our water bill that he had paid, and we asked him why, and he said, because you needed it. We had never asked him to do it. Okay. <clears throat> Let me ask you, was it unusual for Mr. Woodward uh, to dress in camouflage clothing? No. That was pretty much an everyday occurrence, right? Every single day. 
Were you present uh, at about 10 o'clock, I'm sorry, 9 o'clock, uh, when your husband serenaded the Woodward's home to his version of Charlie Daniels, a simple man? I was home, but I was not outside that I remember. Okay. Could you hear the song? I've heard the song Simple Man before. I have not heard my husband's version of it. The version that he used that night? I guess. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you. <clears throat> Would you agree or disagree that you and these other people were engaging in a pattern of harassing the Woodward family? No. No, you were not? No. Okay. And <clears throat> isn't it a fact that you threatened to increase the activity even after Mr. Woodward's arrest because you were offended by something you had been told by the state attorney's office? I don't remember that. You recall a meeting with Assistant State Attorney Gary Beatty, Jessica Noble, yourself, uh, I think Kim Cast, where Mr. Beatty informed you that because of your all's activities that he did not believe that this case was appropriate for the death penalty and you all becoming upset about that. I do remember that. Do you recall posting on Facebook shortly after that meeting in response to a, another Facebook post initiated by Jessica Nobles? Now, ma'am, do you recall uh, in response to a Facebook post started by Jessica Nobles? Her Facebook post was, I'm so fucking pissed off right now. I came from the state attorney's office, and he basically said that what Mr. fucking William Woodward did to us, i.e. Gary, Roger, Kim, Kerry, and myself and our 12 kids does not matter in the murder case. All that matters is what was said to him. Well, Mr. William Woodward, you said you were at war, and you ended it, and I am telling you, you ain't seen shit, bitch. You fucking wanted a war now, and your family got one. It's on bitches. I know more low-life scumbags than I care to mention. You think you were tormented. Well, guess what? It's going to be so much worse. Survive that fucktard. And then you posted, I'm with you, girl. Such bullshit. I'm totally disgusted with the SA office. They don't give two shits about us. Totally wrong. War is on now because this nosy ass bitch isn't done yet. I do remember that? making that. Blake, I want to show you an excerpt of what's in evidence uh, as Defendant's Exhibit 1. It's a part of the surveillance video from the night of September 2nd through September 3rd. Okay. Okay, this begins at, for the record, uh, 21, 59, 54, and it's going to continue to 220017. First of all, can you identify the voices in that? Did you hear a portion of that to the effect of it's finally going down? I'm okay. I'm sorry. You can, I'm, Is there I'm, an objection? Yes. Can we approach? I'm going to publish a second excerpt, <clears throat> which is found at 224340 to 224451.
first of all, could you identify the voices in that segment? Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> did you recognize where Mr. Hembry was standing when he made that comment from watching the video? Okay. Do you happen to recall what color shirt Mr. Hembry was wearing that night? Okay. Is that Mr. Hembry? But you could identify, how do you like me now, bitch, comment is coming from Mr. Hembry. And this is the edge of the property right across the street from the Woodward house where this group of people are standing. Is that not correct? Okay. But at the far edge of Gary's property, correct? And the edge closest to the Woodward house. Do you know who fired those four shots? <clears throat> Did you hear them that evening? It's about 11 o'clock at night, six minutes till 11, right? Do you recognize that? And how do you recognize that? And what is the purpose of that instrument? And is that where it's usually stored? And I'm sorry, just for the record, uh, that states 124. Is it some sort of barbecue? No. I'm not sure what the purpose of it was. Do you agree it's something that certainly could be used as a pretty ferocious weapon? Witness me. Sit down. Thank you. Are there any nicknames for your daughter? No. What is her name? Crystal. Crystal. So if we heard Crystal being referred to uh, in this video, that would be your daughter. That's one of my daughters, yes, sir. Okay. And how old was she at this time? Eleven. Possibly 12, not 100%. Let me ask you this. Did you ever encourage your daughter uh, to shout obscenities at the Woodward family? Oh, my goodness, no. You wouldn't have whispered in her ear? Not my children, no, sir. And if they had called somebody bitch or something like that in your presence, you certainly would have reacted, right? Yes, sir. Were you Facebook friends with Roger Bacor? Facebook friends? Not that I remember, no, sir. Have you seen that photograph before? Okay. More importantly, had you seen uh, that weapon other than in his Facebook? No, sir. Okay. Do you know where he was keeping it the night of September 2nd? No, sir. I want to show you what's uh, in evidence as Defendant's Exhibit 4. Do you recognize the scene there? You know what that charcoal lighter was being used for that evening? Okay. Wasn't being used to burn anything in the front yard? More specifically, it wasn't being used as an accelerant to create the fire in the front yard. No, yeah, ma'am. The early morning hours of September 3rd, when 
time period that Mr. LaCour was shot, uh, your <coughs> husband was shot, Mr. Hembry was shot. Where were you at the time of the first shots? I was inside my house. Did you hear the shots? I did. Okay. And what did you do once you had heard the shots? Grabbed my kids and my dogs and went in the hallway and shut all the doors. And is that where you remained until the police arrived? I believe at one point I did crack the door about this far, saw my husband in a pool of blood, slammed it back shut, locked it, and went in the hallway. Okay, so you didn't see the actual shooting or the no, sir. leading up to the shooting? No, sir. All right, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Ms. Blake, I wanted to uh, talk with you in general and then we'll get more specific. Now, this court proceeding you had back in 2015, where you're being asked to listen to pieces of a surveillance tape that was over at the uh, Woodward home. Right, you remember that? Yes. Let's start with, when did you become aware that there was a surveillance camera uh, over at the Woodward home uh, videotaping everything? I believe we recognized it August 6th. Okay. So, <coughs> did you believe that the camera was recording activities over in the Hembry and yes, Lake sir. area? All right. And so if someone, including you, yelled something, it was likely being recorded by the camera? Yes, sir. Now, when you were listening to the tape, how well could you hear it? And I'm talking about, on, you heard some of it now, but I want to talk about on August, uh, back in, in 2015. Could you clearly hear what was being said on the tape? Some of it, yes, and some of it was so distorted, no, you could not. All right. Could you clearly identify, and we'll, I'll go through and be more specific uh, later, um, do you, um, could, could you clearly hear who was speaking, even when you talked to the jury about some of the, the pieces of tape that you heard here? Can you uh, definitely say that it's a certain person as opposed to someone else from what you heard on the tape so far today? Only certain clips. Okay. So let's, um, I think the, you know, I'm just going to go through the transcript. And I think you have one there. Yes, sir. The first time that, that um, the transcript was talked about sequentially was on page uh, 459. And in anywhere in that transcript, does it say when, where, uh, what was being done at the time that the clip is played? So does it say a date? Every time you... No. All right. So there's no date associated with uh, when that clip happened? No, sir. All right. Is there anything that tells you what you saw in conjunction with anything that was said there? No, sir. And um, I think that time you, um, uh, you're asked about... Uh, about burn it on line 10, and, and you said yes. Yes, sir. Right. Do, you, do you remember today what the context of that was? I do not. All right. Do you know if you were even present? And this is what I, I want to know. Were you present for the actual conversation? In, in other words, you recall the conversation because of what you heard on the tape, or can you even say you were there? No, sir. Now, is your interpretation about what's on that tape any better than any juror that's sitting in the box? Probably not. And, and what I'm really asking is, when you're responding to these questions, are you basing this on what you're hearing, or are you uh, able to say, okay, I hear this, I recollect this, and this is the context, and this is this conversation? No, sir. All right. You're not remembering conversations from this at all? Um, 
Not really, no, sir. Okay. You remember things that were, were set, and you've talked with Mr. Eisenman yes. about those. And uh, those things should be on the videotape if we listen to it, right? Yes, sir. Now, I want to talk to you about, because um, the jury's seen the tape now, obviously, at least four hours of it. Okay. Plus. And uh, there's a part of the tape where a group goes down and a couple of people move, and they're talking, communicating about uh, the fact they're mooning. I think they're saying like four cheeks in the wind or something like that. Do you recall that portion of the tape? No, sir. I was not outside during that time. So you didn't see any of that? No, sir. And so when Mr. Eisenmanger in interprets the tape and says uh, 25 down on line 8, do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand what he's saying? And your response is, no, I do not. I'm Are sorry, you, what page? I'm sorry, page 465. Okay. Restate your question. I will. On page 465, line 8, and it was, the phrase of 25 down, first of all, do you understand what he's saying? And what your response was what? No, I do not. So that means, did you hear somebody say 25 down? No, sir. All right. And then uh, lo uh, further down, uh, the female voice, does any of that sound like your daughter and your answer to that? Not to me, no, sir. So did you recognize the voice as your daughter? No, I did not. All right. So it, it, was it your opinion it was not your daughter? Correct. Did you recognize the voice at all? He didn't ask you, and I don't know if you remember today. I don't believe I did. All right. So um, in this, this hearing that Mr. Eisenmayer was asking you about, were you present for many of the conversations that you were being asked to interpret on the videotape? No, sir, I was not. I think the next thing that he... Uh, talk to you about is on page 466. Let me go back. Now, on let's go back to page 465. And I want you to look at um, line 15 and 16 and 17. See those? Yes, sir. All right. As you sit here today, do you remember the audiovisual clip that was played back in 2015 that you responded to those questions? No, I do not. Do you recall the content of the information uh, uh, concerning uh, the clip or what, what it is that was said, the words? No, sir. And so you ultimately indicate or answer that you recognize your husband's voice. Correct. All right. But in that same context, you didn't identify anything that he said, did you? No, sir. Okay. Okay, now I want to go to page 466. Now, on, on page 466, um, the, you, were, you were played a part of an audiovisual clip that you don't remember what point it was, what day it was, what uh, time it was, do you? No. Today? And um, you're asked about whether or not you res recognize a voice, and whose voice did you recognize on the tape at line 16? Myself. All right. And um, you agreed that you were down at the roadside? At that point? Yes, I said apparently at that point, yes, sir. Okay. Now, Mr. Eisenmanger then said, did you hear someone say when he goes to jail, and how did you respond to that? No, I did not hear that. Okay. And then another audio, so, so you didn't hear anybody say uh, when someone goes to jail from the clip when you listened to it then. No, sir. 
All right. May be on the tape, may not be. You just didn't hear it, right? Correct. All right. <clears throat> now, you were playing another um, clip again, and uh, there you responded that it sounded like someone else. Do you even remember today if it was the same clip? Now, what I'm asking about right now, and we'll get to, to what exactly you said, is this next video clip, do you, uh, do you remember what was on that video clip today? No, I do not. All right. And um, your response there after it was played was, um, I did. There was no question, was there? Was there any question after the video? Not that I can remember now. And do you see one on the transcript? No, I do not. All right. So what did you say after the video clip was played? I did. It sounded like Kimberly cast. All right. So what did you mean when you said I did? That I heard a voice. Okay. Then on the following page, um, the, the first question, okay, so Ms. Cast is talking about when he goes to jail and... Your response was? I guess. So did you ever hear him cast say, say anything about going to jail? Not that I can remember, no, sir. Now I want to take you to page 472. And I want you to go to line 11 of 472. All right. As you see here today, do you remember the video clip that was played back in 2015? No, sir. All right. And the question, I'm going to go through the question that was followed, followed the video clip. This is Mr. Eisenminger talking, interpreting what's on the tape. Do you recognize, first of all, do you hear someone say, be careful, he's got a gun? And what was your response to that on line 14? No, I did not. Further question. Okay, regardless of what you heard or didn't hear, do you recognize the voice? Do you, what's your answer on line 17? One of the females, but I couldn't tell you who. And then he asked, Could, can we eliminate you as one of the possibilities? And what was your response? I'm pretty sure. So that means maybe, doesn't it? Correct. Now, um, he follows up uh, uh, after another audio-visual clip is played. Do you remember what that one was? That's on line 22. No, sir, I do not. All right. Um, he asked you the question, does that appear to be the same female voice again? And I said yes. All right. And apparently, that time you were able to say definitively it was not you because of the second clip, right? Not the earlier. Correct. Do you know what day these clips were from? Not 100%. I believe it was from the day of the shoot or the day before the shooting, okay. September 2nd. The day going into it. Well, it was the, into the, September 3rd. Right. Was it? Do you remember if it was already dark? I do not. I believe it was, but I do not remember. Right. And you don't remember the time? No, sir. Do you even have a sense of how long it was before the the uh, shootings happened? No, sir. Okay. Now I want to I want to move forward to uh, after midnight on September 2012. Okay. September 3rd. Okay. I mentioned that, and I think the shooting happened uh, based on the tape around. Uh, 1237, 1238, 1239, somewhere in there. <clears throat> when was the last time you'd been 
outside of your house and in the area, the yard area between the Hembry residence and your residence? I believe it was right around midnight. I stepped out to see what was going on, where everyone was. I believe Crystal was still awake. My other daughter was sleeping already, and I was getting her to put her to bed because it was so late. I told her it was time to go to bed, and that was roughly midnight. Okay. All right. And uh, who was out there when you went outside? Who do you, if you can do the best you can to visualize the scene of, of what you saw the last time you were outside? I believe Kim Cast was under the little tent in between the houses cleaning up food. Uh, Justin, his couple of friends that came, I don't know their names. Okay. Uh, Roger, and I think my husband was outside as well. Okay. And had there been some drinking going on? Yes, sir. All right. Now let's talk about um, your husband. Had he been drinking that uh, evening going into the morning? Yes, sir. When the, when the last time you saw him, um, how impaired was he, if you, could, if you have an opinion? He was pretty drunk, but not drunk enough to fall over. He was still able to walk, talk, but he was, he was pretty tore up. How was he acting that led you to reach the conclusion that he was pretty tore up, but not falling down? What, what was he doing? He was kind of stumbly. He was slurring a little bit of his words. Um, What about Mr. Picour, Mr. Peacher? We pr pronounced his name two different ways. Uh, the last time that you had contact with Mr. Picour, um, how did he appear to you as far as being under the influence of alcohol or cannabis? He was, he was pretty drunk, too. Okay. And what, how was he acting that led you, what did you see that led you to reach that conclusion? I saw him drinking all night. Okay. Um, I really, I don't know much about Roger. I didn't really, I mean, I saw him that night, but not too much. He didn't really seem, I mean, he was tore up slurring his words, but he was acting as far as walking and doing normal things. He was walking fine. Okay. So what you recognize was slurred speech? Yes. Was he outgoing and gregarious, more outgoing and gregarious than he normally is? Yes. Now, how about um, Gary Hembry? Did you observe Gary Hembry? And I, I want to focus on the last time you would have seen Gary Hembry before you went back inside. Do you remember how he was acting? The same way, slurring his words. Um, Stumbly, but not falling over. Now, I think you were asked, um, and I, I wanted to ask you, uh, sometime shortly after uh, midnight, I think maybe 10 after, uh, what appears to be a palm frond is burned. Were you out there at that time? No, sir. I stepped, I think I had stepped out as it was finishing burning, and I told him to knock it off and went in for the evening completely. I went, you guys are crazy, knock it off, and walked inside my house. That was the last time I ever saw Gary or Roger. Okay. Do you remember if Miss Cass was out by? I don't remember. Now, I want to ask um, where you were in the house the first time you recognized what turned out to be a gunshot. When you walk into my carport door, there was the, a small kitchen area and then like a bookshelf on the wall that went down to my hallway. So you had to walk around that bookshelf to go down the hallway. And I was standing in front of the bookshelf and Crystal, my daughter, was standing kind of not around the corner, but right there at the corner of the bookshelf. 
when we started to hear the gunfire and she looked at me and she goes, mommy, is that fireworks? <coughs> sorry. I, I agree. You can't. Sustain. I'm sorry. So your, your daughter reacted to, to the sounds? Yes. All right. And I believe Mr. Eisenmenger acted, asked you, but I wanted to be clear. You, you didn't go outside when you heard that, right? Away. No, sir. I cracked the door about three inches. It wasn't the first gunshot. It was, there was like three and then a multiple. And when the multiples went off, at first we thought it was fireworks. And I cracked my back door on the carport open about this far and saw my husband laying in a pool of blood, slammed it shut, locked it, and went in the hallway. Okay. Now, did you contact law enforcement? Yes, sir, right away. Did you see, well, let me, let me go back to, uh, there was a segment on the, video, one of the videos you saw today where there was this popping noise in the, on, on the video. Yes, sir. Remember that? Yes, sir. All right. Were you, did, did that night that this was uh, happening, did you hear that that night? Correct? No, sir. All right. Did that happen anywhere close to you where you would, in other words, where you would be able to hear it? Stained. All right. All right. Well, was there anything going on around you? Did any did you see anyone with a some firecrackers or a handgun around you? No, sir. Did you see anyone with any walking around with any weapons? No, sir. And I'm talking about Mr. Hembry, Mr. Decor, and your husband. No, sir, not unless a beer bottle can be used as a weapon. All right. So <coughs> what did you see in their hands when you, if you saw anything when you were around? Beer bottle? I don't have any other questions. Can you redirect? Ma'am. Back at the other hearing, there were some things you heard and identified some things you did not, correct? Correct. Now, I could take you page by page, and some of them, as Mr. Rusk pointed out, you didn't hear, and you told me you didn't hear, right? Correct. I didn't ask you about those today, did I? Correct. I asked you about the ones you heard, correct? Correct. And the ones you identified, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, sir. Now, are you saying that you didn't know that you were looking at the surveillance tape of September uh, stretching into the early hours of September 3rd at the last hearing? No, I believe I told Mr. Respis that when he asked. Okay, well he kept asking you, you didn't know what you were watching or didn't remember. You remember that what you were being shown is different parts of that tape, correct? It was the video leading the video. up to the shooting. Yes. And Mr. Rest would ask you uh, if your recollection of who was speaking at various times on the tape was any better than any juror. You certainly know Roger Pecor's voice better than any juror, correct? Correct. Kim Cass' voice any better than any juror? I suppose. Tim Blake's voice better than any? Yes. Juror? Your own voice better yes. than any juror? And Jessica Noble's voice better yes. than any jurors. So the fact that you were able to identify a voice and pin it to a specific person is based on your interaction with that person, an experience a juror wouldn't have, right? No. Thank you. Any recross? Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Would please state your full name. Lehman James Huntington. Can you spell your first and last names? First name, Lehman, L-E-I-M-A-N. Last name, Huntington, H-U-N-T-I-N-G-T-O-N. Thank you. You may inquire. Thank you. Mr. Huntington, back in 2012, where did you reside? 
and Titusville at the Royal Spanish Villas. Okay. And did you have occasion while you were living at that apartment complex uh, to meet a couple identified to you as Tim and Carrie Blake? Yes, I did. How did you meet them? Uh, one of the residents there was friends with the uh, Tim. Okay. And back in August, the August to September time frame, a couple of weeks uh, before the shooting that is the subject of this uh, trial, <clears throat> do you recall having a series of conversations with one or the other of them regarding what they characterized as their entertainment plans? Yes, I did. Could you tell the jury about that, please? Yes. Um, on occasions uh, when I would speak with Tim, uh, he did some work for me, and after he was done with work, he said, it's uh, time to go fuck with the neighbor. And I, you know, kind of asked him what he was talking about, and he never really articulated. He just said that he hated that motherfucker, and he was wanting to kill him. And I uh, said uh, it was either him or me. And that went on for a, a few weeks before uh, the shootings occurred. Okay. Did you ever hear any similar comments expressed by Carrie Blake? Yes, I did. Would you tell the jury about the comments that were made in your presence by Carrie Blake? Yeah. Well, well she uh, said that every day they would go home and fuck with the neighbor, and it was their entertainment, you know, is what she, way she put it. Um, it was a, a ritual. You know, Every single night they had a chance they would drink some beers and have fun with the neighbor. Now, did they ever identify the neighbor by name? No, they never did identify him by name. Okay. After you heard about the events of September uh, 2nd and 3rd uh, regarding Mr. Woodward, did you contact the police? Yes, I did. And did you share this information with them? Yes, I did. All right. Nothing further. Thank you. Yes. Cross-examination. Okay, thank you very much, sir. You may step down.